Hi friends, I'm TTB. Welcome back to Mac Warrior Online News, guys. The patch 24th of August has hit finally. HPG Manifold Reborn is out, the Mac Quirk Pass number one is out, and there are some more news that we need to talk about. So, guys, in this video, we'll talk about the extra changes that happened apart from the video that we did a couple of days ago on the patch and on the uh, map redo. And then we'll also talk about the new map. We're gonna have a quick overview and uh, see what's what. There is also a new mech sale going on currently. That will be a separate video. I will give you guys recommendations on which mechs to buy and where to best spend your hard-earned MC. So check it out. Uh, it's going to come out today as well. Now, for the mech updates or the quirk pass, uh, just scrolling through it, most of it is basically the same. I'm going to be very quick right here. So HPG Manifold gets an update. We'll get into that a little bit later. Then there is the mech quirk pass number one with a lot of mechs getting extensive quirks, mostly focused on armor and structure, as well as taking um, specific cooldown or specific bonuses and making them into generic bonuses. Um, also, some mechs are receiving added tankiness by uh, giving them less crit chance received modifiers. Um, some mechs are going to get a lot tankier, and we can check that out as well. Now, as you can see, guys, there was a lot of stuff going on for the mech quirks. We went over them in a little bit more detail in the other videos. So if you haven't seen it yet, I would like you to, to just check out that video because in that video, we talk about all these in more detail. Now, scrolling, scrolling, still scrolling, still scrolling, still scrolling. And we are almost at the end. Almost at the end. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on. And that video was half an hour long. And here we are, finally. Weapons adjustments. As a continuation of our assessment of weapon performance since April, the following change has been made. Clan Large Pulse Laser, Heat Penalty Multiplier increased to 4 from 3. So there will be an increase in Clan LPL Heat Penalty. And they say this is done to address the current situation where firing 4 Clan Large Pulses are providing to be almost consequence-free when compared to the damage output potential. So um, it looks to me like this shouldn't uh, hit 3 Large Pulses as much, but 4 Large Pulses will have a much higher heat spike we have to check that out as well now then equipment adjustments guys as we've always said guys ecm without the skill tree is kind of useless and they have finally come to realize that uh one of the shortcomings of ecm is its minimal effect in terms of enemy radar detection range versus its tonnage cost to compensate for such a small effect mechs often need to spend a large number of skill nodes in order to bring their ecm to a baseline functionality i.e you have to spend how many skill points 15 skill points or so to get enhanced ecm one and two Considering the fact that mechs with ECM often get fewer performance enhancing quirks, this is particularly punishing to new players, yes, who choose their first ECM mech with no skill nodes unlocked and they wonder why they will always get targeted from out of nowhere because, hey, I've got ECM, how does, can this guy see me? Well, because your range is going to be really, really bad. To improve about this issue, this patch is a shifting a portion of the ECM performance from the skill tree to the base stats of the ECM module. So... ECM, Clan Inner Sphere, will have the radar reduction increased to 50% from 30%, so that is a nice increase. On the other side of things, the enhanced ECM will uh, only decrease enemy radar range reduction to 12.5% from 22.5%. So, basically, they're wrapping the base by a flat 20% and they're removing a flat 20% from the skill tree. No problems here. I would still recommend to get enhanced ECM 1 and 2. Uh, guys, it's, it's still going to be a must-have, but base ECM without any skill points in a mech is going to be better, making skilling those mechs up a little bit easier. In the engine department, there's a fix to the XL100 engine in weight uh, to make it more consistent with the rest of the engine lineup and with the MWO mech construction rule set. So XL100, Clan and Inner Sphere, weight decreased by 0.5 tons. Okay, if you ever put an XL100 engine in there... <laughs> In the mech, if you ever want to stand around like a turret, I guess, uh, yeah, it's going to be a little bit less weight now. Mech default loadout adjustments. Uh, there is a, a fix on the active probe on the missed links. Can active probe is now unlocked and can be removed from the head component on all the missed links variants. Interesting. So that uh, gives you, what, one, one ton to play with? Very interesting. Gameplay adjustments. This is a big one, guys. Missile hardpoint doors. Now, I've said for so much time, the delay in opening the missile flaps is just way too long. And the bonus that you're supposed to get from those missile flaps over a mech, for example, that has exposed missile bay doors, like let's say, for example, uh, Hatamoto Chi, for example, right? Um, 
is just not there because those missile bay doors are supposed to do to give you more tankiness because you have to shoot through the doors first or to hit the torso right so um and there's actually a bonus in mwo or should be in mwo where you receive less damage 20 percent currently damage reduction effect if you have your missile bay doors closed however uh, a lot of mechs that had missile bay doors, uh, you didn't want to have your missile bay doors closed, so you would open them up with a hotkey on your keyboard before you start fighting, because otherwise you would have like about a half a second to a second delay in firing, and that could be crucial uh, whether you actually hit a target or not, or whether you die or not. So um, people were always having the missile bay doors open. And now they're finally saying, you know what? We are going to go ahead and fix that. And the fix is basically very simple missiles will shoot instantly so there will still be the animation of the doors opening and closing but the missiles themselves will be shooting instantly so as you're shooting the missile bay door opens and and at the same time it shoots and then the missile bay door closes off afterwards again we can have a look at that in a couple of seconds when we also look at new hpg manifold mechs that are affected by this change are going to be stalker archer catapult dervish hellspawn and kintaro the actual changes are missile door firing delay changed from uh, 0.5 to 0, 0.0, so instantly. Missile doors now stay open for 1.25 seconds after firing, from currently about 4 seconds on different mechs, yeah. <laughs> Which led to all sorts of problems, because then you, you were firing, you realized, oh god, I've got my missile bay doors closed, open the missile bay doors, but they would still be open for 4 seconds, so in fact you would actually be closing them again. It was, it was a shit fest. So this is a good, good change. Uh, it took them a couple of years to get to it, but... Nice, I like that one. Faction play conquest mode, max score increased to 1750 from 1250, so that should lead to longer conquest matches. And known issues, there are a couple of visual and graphical glitches on the new HPG manifold, they are aware of those, and they will not affect gameplay and should be fixed ASAP. Alright, so much for that. Let's jump into HPG manifold, let's test out our missiles, and uh, let's also go ahead and check out some of the armor values on those mechs, and finally check out the map as well. I'll see you there. All right, guys, let's check the armor on an Atlas, because the Atlas is one of my favorite mechs and one of the most iconic mechs of all of Battletech. As you can see, we have a full survival tree here, so that means maximum skeletal density, maximum armor hardening, so maximum structure and maximum armor. Let's have a look at the Atlas 7 Delta. Yep, 123 side torso armor, 173 CT armor. <laughs> okay, so this thing has gotten a lot tankier now, about uh, an increase of what, plus 20 or so, uh, compared to the base version, so that is going to be nice. That's going to help these models survive a little bit longer, because let's face it, they're giant, big, stompy robots and super easy targets to hit. So increasing armor on those should be a no-brainer. Let's have a look at another mech, and that would be the Highlander Heavy Metal, because that's one that we also enjoy a lot. And I want to see if anything changed there as well. If I can actually spell Highlander with an H... There is the Atomology, there is the Highlander, there is the Heavy Metal. Let's have a look at the skill tree first. Full armor skill tree and full structure skill tree as well. Uh, CT armor, 160 now, side torso 103, plus the structure very close to the Atlas. And the 86 CT structure, the 86 CT structure that you see right here on the Highlander. I want to see if, how, how that compares against the Atlas. 86 versus 78. That's what I thought. So the Highlander Heavy Metal is basically almost as tanky <laughs> as the Atlas 7D. Yeah, yeah. I keep telling you guys, Highlanders, very, very cool tanky mechs and not as fat as the Atlas. Okay, now that we've talked about that, guys, let's have a look at one of the mechs that has missile bay doors, and that would be the Dervish. Um, you guys remember that shameful LRM5 mech that we did a couple of weeks ago that actually worked quite nicely. Let's go ahead, take this mech to uh, HPG Manifold, of course, and uh, let's have a look at the weapon bay doors. Have a look at the animation and have a look at the map itself. And of course, we're just going to fly through the map. I'm not going to run my mech throughout the map. That would be a waste of time. All right, so let's get our mech into position right here. Use the X. Let's see graphical. No, it's not graphical. It's just, never mind. It's just a cockpit. Okay, so external camera button is F5. All right, here we have our dervish. Now, this is the button. Let me, let me show you how, what you normally would do. So normally you would, uh, would want to shoot. And what the mech would do, if you shot the arms, shoots instantly. If you didn't shoot instantly, I'm going to try to simulate how it would look like in the past. Weapon bay door opens. You shoot. One, two, three, four, five. And then the weapon bay door would be closing again. I think it just lagged a little bit there. 
Come on. There we go. Okay. So, let's test the new version. Once again, this is without weapon bay doors. These are the arm weapons. They shoot directly. And this is the weapon bay door. And as you can see, there's no delay. It, it basically looks like to me like that they're instantly launching the missiles without even triggering the animation. Try this again. Strike online. Yeah, they're instantly shooting them. So, um... <laughs> of course, it, it, it might look a little bit funny because mechs will now be shooting from hard points where you can't see it, but um, I think it's a better version because now we can finally make use of those weapon bay doors. And as you can see, after about 1.5 seconds or so, they will close and then you have the 20% damage resistance on them that you should have. Very, very nice. Okay, so much for that. New HPG manifold. First time exploring it. Let's go. Okay, so the first thing I'm noticing is this spawn point still exists. Um, so I'm guessing the other spawn points still exist as well. You can still go ahead and go on the outside of the map. This is new, however. This, I, I think this is new. Hang on. Is this the outside of the map? Nope. Map? Hello? Controls? Game? What just happened? <laughs> I'm having an out of body experience. There we go. Okay, I couldn't get back into my mech. What I wanted to see is the outline of the map. I wanted to see if you can, you can still get up there, right? Yep, so you can still get up there. That's what I wanted to see. I wanted to see the outline of the map. Okay, okay. So, that is clear now. Um, let's check out what we have. I can get the map to go away now. We have these ramps. So if you spawn on the internal side right here, you've got two ramps to lead you up. And once you go up here, you have this cover right here. You've got this cover right here. You can go up here, you can shoot from here, you can have, take some cover right here. You could theoretically... Oh, look at this, the doors now have like a, a, a ledge above them, or like a bridge above them, so you can actually go through. So you don't need jump jets anymore. And you could still, of course, go up here, and then go towards here. You cannot hide behind here, that's out of bounds. And you could still make your way over to here. The HPG generator has actually moved to over here, from uh, where it used to be, right in the center. Okay, on the other side, we still also have this ramp right here that allows access to this area as well. Um, there is some cover here, but a lot of this cover is not very high, so you probably don't want to go up here with assault mech. So if you do, you're probably going to be limited to like this area or or that area, maybe maybe shooting from here. Um, it's not going to be easy, but it's going to be possible. But yeah, um, I mean, just just look at these lines of sights and tell me, guys, this is not a snipe fest because it is a snipe fest. <laughs> it's one hundred percent a snipe fest. Okay, this door. Still closed, so there will be no bridge to get up here. That way, I think that's supposed to, to make it so that other mechs that are coming from this side can't just walk over. Uh-huh. Yeah, exactly. So they, these will not be accessible in between this area right here. Oh, I, I understand what happened. If you open the, if you open the map in this screen, um, you just get locked out. That what's that's what happened to me. Okay. Um, so yeah, you won't be able to get to this area right here on top. Uh, from the outside, you will have to go through the inside. These guys have a ramp up top here. Okay. Do they have another ramp on the other side? Yes. Okay, so this guy side is also accessible from here. But that's a very, very open ramp. So maybe something for mediums or heavies. Uh, you could also like go up here and try to snipe. But yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's basically the map now has a thousand spots where mechs with long range weapons can sit and hit a lot of the map. Okay. On the other spawn, uh, at least it's not, uh, the symmetrical thing, so you also have a way up from here. And you will have a way up from here. It looks like there is less cover here. Because this area has a couple of these like taller nods or taller, taller building areas. Um, although there's one, there is one. These are not as high, so there won't be as much use for cover. So yeah, um, if you go up there, prepare to be shot at. <laughs> I guess that's the message. Okay, and then down here, green side and red side still the same. Um, the basis of this stays the same. Got this back area now with an additional point of cover. So this is basically this is basically the same back area with the cover point that they had on the other side where it normally would be, right here where you had the enemy team pushing up this ramp, and you also had this piece of cover over here. So that basically is mirrored now. That is good. I like mirrored maps because that makes it easier to balance. Okay, let's do a quick dive into the basement, see what the basement looks like, and I can tell you guys one thing, the basement is 100% the same. Basement's still the same. The only change is this area, I believe, 
where it now has this middle ground. So basically, this side has been somewhat mirrored, but not fully. Has it been fully mirrored? Only to this segment right here, only to this, this middle, middle ramp segment. And then what used to be the center is now an area where, let's say, for example, if you moved in, you start the map, you move in over here, and normally people would go potato potato around here. That's not going to be possible anymore. Um, this is probably something that light mechs can pass through, I would say. Lights and mediums, assaults, I don't know. We'll have to see that. But yeah, uh, central area, two access points. One ramp is here, one ramp is here, and then access points through the center, which have opposing ramps. So, um, yeah, rotator potato is going to be hard. Going up top and rotator potato is suicide. Even even going in here is going to be basically suicide at the beginning of the mission, because uh, A, you have to traverse this whole area to get over there while you're getting shot at from this angle. And also, like, there's not much cover here. So, um, this central area may be something for fast mechs to move through, but I think we will see a lot of fighting, like, also from here, maybe from these ramps. Um, this area right here, still a pretty big area where there is little to no cover. That's going to be the same on all the sides here. Yeah, I don't know. So, um, guys, I don't know what you think. Let me know in the comments below. Uh, you guys might have already played it. Uh, maybe, maybe I'm wrong, but to me, this is just yet another snipe fest. Um, I'm not excited for the map right now. That might change once we play it. I mean, I'm I'm can't, I'm um, offering commentary right here without having played it so far. But uh, to me, it just has such open lines of sight. It's just a sniper's paradise once again, like the two other maps before, and that does not bode well for the brawling culture in MechWarrior Online. I think that is a, a very important part of the game that has been, shall we say, kept down for a couple of months and years now, and I would like to see that return. So. Um, one way to, to have that is by having, for example, higher obstacles right here. Like, if you had obstacles that would be this high, uh, where you can't shoot through or shoot around, that would be an option. But yeah, this map, huge open space, Sniper's Paradise on the sidelines. So I can see, like, teams lining up, like, I don't know, a couple of dudes that are a little bit faster, maybe up shooting from here, and then maybe some dudes shooting from down low here, or uh, maybe some people shooting from here. But the central part of the area... Uh, because it's so open, I don't know, it doesn't look very safe to me. So uh, we'll see how this new map plays. Let me know how you guys like it in the comments down below. That is it for this video, guys. This has been the patch review. If you're looking for uh, the review of the current sale and recommendations of what to buy, check out the video that is going to release today as well. This has been TTB. Hope this video was helpful to you. Have a great day, guys.